Okay, and then, but tell us that story. I mean, we got it on the other tape, but it's just so much fun. Where he he sits down and says, "John, it's never. You'll never know what it's that like." Was, that was that uh, was January, and uh, <laughs> he'd been up there two or three times, or four or five now. I don't know how many. And I remember it was January because it was bitter cold. And I had a short sleeve uh, shirt on like this, and Bob comes in and sits there, and and you know he's, he's just on. He's lit. And he wants to talk about something, and we already knew we shouldn't talk in here. So we went out by the pool, and Marilee's coming this way, and you know, she said, "What are you two doing?" You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're going out, you know, to talk. You know, and she's suspicious of anything anyway, so she doesn't believe that for a second. But she doesn't. She lets us go. So we went out in that, that little back place by the stable, and uh, I'm looking at him. Said, "What? What? What?" He said, "John." You will never know what it's like to see your first alien. I said, you saw one? You saw one? He said, yeah. I said, it couldn't have been a doll. It couldn't have been. No, it was one. <laughs> and, you know, these days you ask him that question. He says, well, I don't know. Could have been a doll. They were doing all these weird stuff. Oh, yeah. But that night, that's exactly what he said. Okay. And uh, I said, how did it happen? He says, well, I was walking down the corridor. He said, I got a guard on each side. And he said, I walked by this door. And there's like a 12-inch window pane and it has wires through it. And I looked through it, and there's two um, guys uh, lab in lab coats facing me, and an alien standing up talk, talking to them. Now, did I show you that picture? No, I don't think so. Because he drew it for me. Oh, really? Do you yeah, want me to? Yeah, do you want drawing? me to get out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, the original is is blue, and I'm sure it's here somewhere. But this is the original drawing he made me uh drawn by bob lazar december 1988 january 1988 disc hangers at s4 uh position of gray in relation to two scientists in lab coats size orientation and construction of window through which he saw scientists and the gray so uh this is we were he was scribbling all over this is the test site and where s4 was this was the length of the hangers, 360 to, uh, feet, and each bay was 40 feet long. Um, this was how the uh, saucers sat in the hangar. And this drawing right here is the two, um, and these this is what Bob drew. These are the two lab uh, technicians, and that's the little alien facing the other way. And he drew the door, and he drew that, um, wire going through the window. He said he looked through that and saw those guys right there. That's great. Did he ever uh, have any exposure, like communication with them? Yeah, three times, at least three times. Really? Uh, oh. So anyway, uh, the three times that he saw the alien was uh, the first time um, was when they gave him the pine smelling fluid. And um, what they did, it's really interesting, when Bob uh, came in here the very first day and he started, he said, I saw a disc. I said, and he used to wear a ring and I forget which on finger, which finger it was on. He, I said, okay, now listen to me, Bob. They're going to, uh, they're going to give you some drugs and to make you forget what you're doing so what i want you to do is when they take you in to give you the drugs i want to take i want you to take your ring off subtly and put it on your other hand you won't remember but when you come up to see me i'll see it and you'll know you already take the drugs oh, he said wow. they already did that today i said they did and he said and he described this elaborate drug test of you know how they took a needle and they put put a rectangle on his um scratched a rectangle on his arm and then made lines like this and lines like that and then they'd take stuff and they'd put into each little square like that and then they took him into a room and he said the room was um, just like a regular doctor's office and there was a couch and he lied he laid on the couch and he said there was a screen and blocking something and he said he knew the alien the gray was behind it then there was a military guy with an m16 and a doctor and a nurse and uh, they had him drink the pine smelling fluid and he drank the cup and immediately he felt you know dizzy and he said he described exactly what he felt like he said he felt like he was in a well that was a hundred feet deep 
that his arms were a hundred feet long and he was just holding on to the sides of the well, just barely with his fingertips. That's what he felt like. Huh. He said then they started to read the clearance with which he was, or the briefing of the clearance with which he was being given. So they'd say, you know, they'd read a sentence you know, and say, and I understand that, you know, I am being briefed. And at the end, the soldier would take the M16 and poke it into his stomach like that. And he said it really hurt. And each different phase of the clearance, the soldier would take the M16 and poke it into his solar plexus. So, uh, and so in the tapes that Lane Keck did, when we were trying to get the information out, we, you know, they told him a lot of really interesting stuff. And when we would get to, you know, well, what's going to happen in the future? You know, he'd say, I'm not supposed to talk about that. And then Lane would try to work around it with some subtly and Bob would grab it. He says, no, I can't. It hurts. Oh, my. And uh, wow. so that was the... So like a programming yeah. thing. Right. Uh, the three times, the once was when the pine smelling fluid and um, the once was uh, seeing him in the, um, in the room. And then once when George Knapp hired Tavernetti to come up and do the lie detector test, um, uh, George rented a room at Cedar's Palace and Bob and Gene Huff got there early and they knew the room. And so they pull the door open and uh, Gene pulled the door open. Bob looked inside and he turned white and nearly fainted and he walked over and he sat down in a chair and Gene says, what in the heck is the matter with you? And uh, Bob said, I, I just had a flashback. He said, uh, I remember talking with the gray. And what had happened is when they opened the door, the way that Tavernetti had said, set up there, it was just, it wasn't very much light. It was one single table with a chair on one side and a chair on the other side and some equipment there. It triggered this reaction of Bob when he was reading the briefings and the gray was across from him. And it was such an overwhelming experience of when you first, you know, are in the presence of a gray, when, you know, you're used to asking a question and then having somebody respond. But when you're talking to an alien, they pick it up from your mind and they're answering before you can get out of your mouth and it gets confusing. And it was just an almost overwhelming experience. So. That was the other time that, that Bob had the... Uh...